What if you're playing the worst legend and you don't even know about it? There are several legends that are being affected by the Apex Legends power creep, but most people stick to their guns and continue playing even though they aren't really worth picking up anymore. Here are 5 legends that you need to stop playing in Apex Legends Season 13. Let's start off with one of the fan favorites that is seemingly randomly being phased out due to an alternative seeing more and more play. We're talking about Bloodhound. Bloodhound does have a more forgiving field of view with their scan, seeing as they scan in a 120 degree cone, as well as constantly seeing tracks of enemies who have crossed the area in the last 90 seconds. But that's where the similarities between Seer and Bloodhound end. Bloodhound can track enemies that have been moving around the area, but their passive becomes completely useless the second the game slows down and rats have been sitting in their position for over those 90 seconds. Seer's passive, on the other hand, can be used constantly and is effective as long as you pass over the enemy within a 55 degree cone and a 75 meter radius. His passive is far from as strong as it was during its release, where it had a significantly more forgiving cone turning him into a permanent wall hack, but he's still just as strong as long as you have a little bit of game sense and map knowledge so you know where to scan. As for Bloodhound's tactical, it does have that 100 degree cone scan, but it only reveals enemies for 3 seconds before going on its 25 second cooldown, which is nothing compared to the Seer's tactical. And yes, while it is a little bit less forgiving, seeing as you can dodge it, because it is only 8 meters wide, it interrupts the enemy's heals, batteries, and revives, it gives them a 1.25 second silence on their abilities, and shows the enemy's health bar over their head, and it stays active, showing the enemy's location for 8 seconds. Wall hacks are very oppressive, and 8 second highlight in combination with all of the other effects, compared to Bloodhound's measly 3 seconds, clearly shows whose tactical is better. When it comes to their ultimates, it is a little bit harder to compare because they do have a bit of a different purpose. Bloodhound runs faster, can see enemies through smokes, and has their tactical cooldown reduced from 25 to 8 seconds, enabling Bloodhound's kit a little bit more and allowing them to make plays on their own, while Seer's ultimate reveals any enemy moving around inside of the ultimate's area for 30 seconds. That being said, if you put the pros and cons up against each other, Seer is the clear winner. If you agree, smash the like button. If you disagree, hit the dislike button and let me know in the comments. In short, Bloodhound is the easier pick with a lower skill floor and ceiling, whereas Seer has a way higher skill floor and ceiling, as he's harder to pick up and do well with, but a force to be reckoned with once you start mastering him. Bloodhound currently has an 8.6% pick rate, and Seer only has a 3.7% pick rate, so if you're looking for the timing to pick up a new legend and start dominating before everyone else does, now's the time. Next up is a legend that I'm still surprised sees any play at all, and that's Mirage. Mirage somehow sees more play than a few legends on this list, and I have a hard time seeing why. Why? His passive does have some use with cloaking you and your teammates whenever you go for a revive, but honestly that use is niche, especially against enemies who know what they're doing since while it does buy you maybe an extra second or two on the revive, they can still hear it going off and still should have an idea where you are reviving from, letting them kill you while you're trying to stick the rest and falsely assuming that you're in the clear. According to Mirage mains, this is his main selling point in the more serious lobbies and his usefulness ends there. His tactical psych out sends a duplicate clone hall that's walking in a straight line to wherever the real Mirage targeted. It can be manually controlled to look a little bit more human-like, and also does alert Mirage and his teammates of any enemy that shoots the clone's position, but serves very little use other than tricking the enemy for a second or so before the jig is up. You can do some high-level bamboozles as well by pretending that you are a clone and plenty of other mind tricks, but I don't think it's that great or useful. His ultimate deserves some credit because it does have some dual outplaying potential, deploying a team of controllable decoys to distract his enemies, after turning the real Mirage invisible for a second to really confuse the enemy, and finding a good Mirage that uses his ultimate properly is really, really hard. But all of these abilities are niche, leaning towards a strength with jewels, and when it comes to assembling a good team composition in the Apex Legends battlefield, enabling your team through abilities and versatility in your kit is key. Mirage is fun, but in a conventional composition, whose position does he take? Wraith, who provides rotations and scouting on top of having a small hitbox, Gibraltar, who provides an invaluable shield, along with almost guaranteed 1 duels and a super strong ultimate to provide pressure, or Valkyrie who provides zone info and rotations into late game, even when teams are holding you off and getting in the way of a rotation. When you keep all of this in mind, Mirage just doesn't have a place in the meta. Next up is another legend that's lost its place in the meta, kinda not fitting in as he relies on other movement legends abilities to even have any particular use. We're talking about Revenant. His passive allows you to climb faster and higher, as well as 
crouch walking at normal movement speed, but this doesn't have much use except for the niche flank there and then. But his lack of escape ability along with his big, chunky hitbox means Revenant shouldn't be flanking in the first place. His silence does have some use in an ability heavy meta, allowing you to silence an enemy's abilities for 15 seconds, but it is a bit hard to line up and mostly only serves the purpose of crowd control, denying a team's field of view or stopping them from moving through a certain area for 10 seconds. And the peak of his kit is the Death Totem, which allows users to turn themselves into a shadow for 25 seconds, no longer taking shield damage, but instead of dying, they get sent back to the Death Totem if they zero out. The Death Totem has some niche uses on its own if you're trying to push into bunker teams and look for kills, but overall requires other abilities such as Wraith's Portal, Ash's Portal, or Octane's Jump Pad if you want to get the most value possible. Revenant is in the same position as Mirage, with some niche use cases, but overall not providing enough movement or abilities to actually compete with other choices for a team composition. Next up is another legend that I'm sure might end up being a controversial piece of this list, and that is Lifeline. Now hear me out, Lifeline is very strong when used correctly in the right situation. You're probably going to guess what I'll say next, which is that she's yet another niche legend that you cannot rely on at every part of the game. Her strength lies in her passive, which allows you to revive both your down teammates at once without being locked into an animation, and you're actually able to protect them while doing so, but her tactical, the dock drone, just gives a little bit of health heal and her ultimate care package does give good smart loot meaning that it will always upgrade you and your teammates gear but it takes forever to charge up a long time to go down and makes you a target on the map and it doesn't have much use other than gearing you up again the strength of lifeline's kit is her passive and it's incredibly strong when used correctly since a knock normally means that you need to make the decision of watching the enemy team when they're pushing or to try to stick the revive but lifeline's kit removes a choice and allows you to revive a teammate risk-free so why shouldn't you play her well the Offhand's revive is strong and all, but it's relying on your teammates getting knocked in the first place. So as a lifeline, you might just not get to use the strongest part of your kit unless your teammates get knocked, which just isn't worth the trade-off for legends that can provide utility at any stage or phase of the game. Also, just quickly before we move on to the final legend, we're still only at 16.7% of you guys watching, actually being subscribed. It helps me a lot, and I would love to get the Otter Gang to 500,000 subscribers. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on a daily banger content. Finally on this list is another choice that I know will ruffle some feathers, we're talking about Watson. Her passive allows her to carry two ultimate accelerants at the same time, as well as instantly charging her ultimate, which is nice. What defines her kit is her perimeter security, which allows you to fence up an area or building to varying degrees of success, allowing you to lock teams out of or inside of a house for a short period of time as they're dealing with defenses to make their way through. With the main goal of your bunkering, forcing the enemy team to make a mistake and push too hard through your fences, or a third party rolling up and cleaning up the fight on your front lawn. Her ultimate, Interception Pylum, does assist with this, providing passive shield recharge as well as destroying any ordinances that are passing within its area, making it even more difficult to push the Watson's team. The pylon lasts forever and can be destroyed with gunfire, but it is a double-edged sword as it has a tendency to eat the defending team's own grenades, even when they've been carefully thrown from inside of its inner circle to outside of it, which normally should stop ordinances from getting destroyed. All of these abilities, again, they serve the purpose of making a push difficult to impossible with the intention either forcing a team to take an unfavorable fight against a bunkered up team or getting stalled enough that they would get third party. But Watson's fence nodes are very easy to break and push through with only 25 health per node and only being difficult to break in some specific locations, meaning that a pushing team can simply wiggle peek and break a few nodes before pushing in without actually risking too much themselves. So why play Watson when Caustic exists? Providing the exact same value of stalling out fights but even more efficiently as the barrels he can place have 150 health and leave a lingering smoke cloud that slows and stuns enemies even after it's destroyed. His ultimate also allows in locking down an area for 10 seconds and lets you reset even if you are two men down. If your favorite legends were on this list, don't fret. Check out the video on the screen to know what legends you should be playing in Season 13. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.